How's it going, everybody? Um, I did not expect to make another Zappa 2 chord video this soon, um, but the reason why is because there seems to be a lot of interest in this concept and also a lot of questions and confusion, too, that I'm hoping to clear up. So this video will certainly take you much, much deeper into the concept. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is clear up some of the confusion. Uh, secondly, I've made some charts uh, illustrating all the different places that you can go with this concept using the C2 chord as an example. And so that will give you a nice visual aid when you're studying this material. And the third part is I made a quick eight bar composition consisting of nothing but C uh, of nothing but two chords. And I will also analyze those and show you kind of what I'm doing there. So um, first things first, and if you want to skip this, you can go to the description where the chapters are listed. Yes, structurally, this is a C, uh, a sus2 chord. It is a sus2 chord, structurally speaking. But the context is what matters in this case. So say we're writing a love song in the key of C major. Okay, so we're writing a love song in the key of C major. Now, a two chord might actually be a very viable choice, and it actually is somewhat of a traditional choice when trying to achieve sort of a dreamful, uh, a dream, dreamy, wistful kind of um, floating in the clouds type of sound, maybe even some kind of romantic sound that would actually be quite appropriate uh, for a song, for our little love song in C major that we're making, okay? Now, that's the traditional way. Normally, it would be a substitute for a chord in a key that's already established and then it doesn't really go to any other key. Now, I can't think of any pop songs off the top of my head that might use the sus2 chord to go to an, a different key. I'm sure that there's probably some examples out there. I'll let you do the internet search. And if you find them, please let me know in the comments so we're all here to, to learn. But the difference is the way Frank Zappa used it is because it's tonally ambiguous, he used it as a means to modulate pretty much anywhere that he wanted. Now, another thing, too, is uh, a few people seem to think that you can play any scale over C2. Not at all the case. And you'll see with the chart uh, what you can and can't do. So Frank used it to modulate just about anywhere that he wanted, including uh, distant keys. So let's check this out in the chart. So these, this is two of four of the charts. I have one for major, one for natural minor, one for melodic minor, and one for harmonic minor. So the way to read this, in the left column we have our typical diatonic chord qualities within each of these uh, general uh, keys, major, natural minor, harmonic minor, and melodic minor, okay? And that's represented by the Roman numerals. To the right is what the C2 chord would be uh, in those respective keys, like for example, C2 is the one chord in the key of C major. It's the two chord in the key of B flat. Okay, major. Um, now, moving forward, some of these don't work. They just don't work. So C is the third in A flat major, but that does not work because our C2 chord contains C, D, and G, and D flat is diatonic to A flat major. So that doesn't work and nor does any diminished chord or augmented chord, which you'll see is uh, noted by the X. Any major or minor example that you see that's denoted by the X will also have an explanation as to why that does not work. Now, if you do see some kind of an error in here, please let me know kindly in the comments, and I do mean kindly. Uh, natural minor, we have C minor as the one chord, of course. Two is diminished, so that's X'd out. It's the major three in A natural minor. C2 is the four in G minor. C2 is the five in F natural minor. C is the sixth in E flat natural minor, but it does not work because it also contains G flat. And of course, G is part of our C2 chord, G natural. So there's some clashing there, it does not work. It's also the seven in D natural minor. So that's how you read these charts. I'm going to go to the next one. Feel free to copy this, screenshot it, do whatever you'd like. And like I said, if you do see a mistake in there, please do let me know. Mistakes do happen. Now, Malak Minor, you can see that they have three different diminished diatonic diminished triads as well as the augmented third. So we don't have a lot of options here. It's the four in G melodic minor and the five in F melodic minor. 
All right. So when you're going to any of these, so basically you can use a two chord also as a pivot from one foreign key to the next. So you can literally just go back and forth in a composition. Uh, you can mix it up melodically in a bunch of different ways and create a really cool sounding thing. Uh, so you can also use it, as you'll see in my composition, as a means to set up a modulation uh, via the five chord and not just a direct modulation. Now typically, if you're setting up a modulation to another key with its five chord, also known as a secondary dominant, uh, it does sort of prep the listener's ear for an upcoming key change, and that can certainly be very effective. And that, of course, is effective in its own right. If you're looking for something to sort of shock the listener, a uh, direct modulation might actually be uh, the way to go. Or I should say just take the listener by surprise. So the last one, harmonic minor, it's the one of course. Two and three are diminished and augmented respectively, so those do not work. C2 is the four in the key of G, harmonic minor. In five it does not work because C is the fifth of F harmonic minor, which also contains a D flat. And again, C2 has C, D, and G. So that's not going to work. Now in the key of E harmonic minor, C is the sixth, but E harmonic minor also contains D sharp, which conflicts with our C2 example. And of course, it's the seven is diatonically diminished in harmonic minor, so that does not work. So those are your two graphs, and um, yeah, that's a pretty detailed. You can actually use this to sort of map out compositions if you'd like. Now, you don't have to stick to all C2 chords, or two chords in general. Okay, so if we're using C2 as an example, and let's say we are going to, uh, I don't know, G harmonic minor, you then have all of the diatonic triads within, or even you can throw in seventh chords, so you can use it as a bridge to different uh, types of diatonic chords. So again, if you use the C2 and imply that it's the four of G minor, then you now have all the diatonic chords within the key of G harmonic minor to work from. So that's a lot of information. And now onto the composition. First, I'm going to play the composition for you and the two instruments I've chosen are piano and marimba. And so this isn't to try to sound like Frank Zappa. I just threw the marimba in because I know that Frank liked it a lot. Um, I'm not trying to sound like Frank Zappa and uh, I'm just trying to sound like me, but this is really just to illustrate a concept. And so I will give you the analysis after I play this. And so here you go. And there you have it. So what's happening here? So we start with the C2 chord and it just sticks within C major. Then it goes to a D2, but the second half is D major, goes back up to the C2 in measure three. Uh, if you look carefully, of course, and you can hear it, first measure and third measure are almost identical. Now things get a little different as in measure four, I chose an F2, and that is going to act as a five chord to B flat major. So measure five, we have B flat two, and also in measure six, there's B flat two. And the melody in, in uh, measure six is B flat harmonic minor. And because E flat is the minor four chord of B flat uh, harmonic minor, I decided to make measure seven melodically E flat harmonic minor, and then it concludes on the C2 chord at the end, kind of making the composition come full circle. And again, there's a ton of different things you can do, obviously. This is just a very quick sample I sort of just put together. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities are endless when you treat the two chord this way. And sure, Frank does not own uh, a two chord. It's not like his chord, but it's his technique, um, at least the tech, one of the many techniques that he's known for. It's kind of like um, the guitar player Barney Kessel. If you haven't heard of Barney Kessel, you should definitely check out Barney Kessel. He was one of the greatest guitar players in the world when he was alive and um, considered one of the all-time greats today. He had a technique called smearing. Now, what's smearing? Well, when you look at it, it seems like just sloppy 
sweeps, but it's a lot more than that, and it's actually much harder to do than you think it is. Um, and so th that's another example of why context matters. It's just a technique that Kessel was known for, just like this is a technique that Zappa was known for, one of many. Um, and so that concludes the video, and I hope you learned a real lot. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.